Hello there and welcome to this video which is going to be focusing on how you can draw dot and cross diagrams for covalent compounds. Okay, so if we start off with a quick recap on what we know. So a covalent bond we know is between non-metals. We also know that a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. Adding to that, you can have single bonds which is one pair of shared electrons, double bonds which is two pairs of shared electrons and triple bonds which is three pairs of shared electrons. But the question is, how can we actually take that information and draw them? So to figure that out, we need to be able to look at the periodic table and just recap how many electrons are in the outer shell. So if it's in group 4, it's 4 in the outer shell, 5 is 5, 6 is 6, and 7 is 7. Now with the exception of hydrogen, they all need to get 8 to get a full outer shell. So in order to do that, if it's in group 4, it needs to gain 4 electrons. In group 5, it needs to gain 3. Group 6, 2. In group 7, it needs to gain 1. Now the key thing here is the number of bonds the elements in group 4, 5, 6 and 7 can form is exactly the same as the number of electrons that it needs to get a full outer shell. So how does this help? Let's have a look at an example then. So if you had methane, and you knew methane had one carbon and the rest of them hydrogen. How do you work that out? So the first thing is to look at the groups they're in. Now carbon is in group 4 and hydrogen is technically in group 1 because it's got 1 in the outer shell even though it doesn't have the properties of a metal. So carbon is in group 4 which means it needs to gain 4 electrons and make 4 bonds. Hydrogen is in group 1, it's in the first shell so it needs 1 electron so it can make 1 bond. So we now know the number of bonds that each can make, carbon 4, hydrogen 1. What you then do is join them up because hydrogen can only make 1, it will bond with carbon and because carbon can make 4 it needs four hydrogens to complete its four bonds. So you have CH4. Now this isn't a dot and cross diagram, but it helps you to figure out the structure. Now another example is water H2O. We've got oxygen, which is in group six. If it's in group six, it means that it needs to gain two electrons and can form two bonds. Hydrogen, as we've just done, can form one bond. Now you know it's H2O, so you put your oxygen in the middle and that can make two bonds and therefore it's got to be filled up with the hydrogen either side. So both hydrogens forming one bond and oxygen forming two. If we have a look at a third example, chlorine, Cl2, both of them are in group seven. So they need one electron, therefore they can form one bond. If it's Cl2, it means they're bonded together. So you just have Cl with one bond between that and the extra Cl. Now in the case of oxygen, it's slightly different because both oxygens are in group six, obviously and that means they need two electrons and therefore can form two bonds. The difference here is that because they both need to gain two, they form something called a double bond. So you get something that looks like this. So that's all well and good, but how can we take that and turn that into a dot and cross diagram? So what we need to do is go back to our original definition. A single bond is one pair of shared electrons. So if we've got one single line drawn, we put one pair of electrons in like this. One of them a dot, one of them a cross, which signifies that one is from one atom, one is from the other. If we have a double bond, we put two pairs in, so two x's and two dots, as you can see here. Now examples of this are H2, HCl, H2O, and CH4. Now, as we've just been through in the previous part of this video, we know that hydrogen hydrochloric acid, water, and CH4 all have single bonds between them. So when you're drawing that, you just put in the single bond, that dot and cross, which we'll get onto in a minute. And then the double bond ones, the ones that you need to know are carbon dioxide, CO2, and oxygen, O2. They're the two key ones. So if it's CO2, you have two double bonds either side, and oxygen, one double bond in between the two atoms. So let's go back to some other ones that we looked at earlier then. So hydrogen. Now we knew hydrogen was H2 with one single bond. So you draw both the atoms overlapping and you put one single pair of shared electrons in there. Next, if we have a look at hydrochloric acid, so we know that's one hydrogen bonded to a chlorine with a single bond. So we draw our circles overlapping again and then exactly the same, we put in our single pair of shared electrons which represents our bond. 
Now you can see that hydrogen has a full outer shell of two, but the issue there is that chlorine does not. Now chlorine we know is in group seven, so it should have seven electrons in the outer shell, but at the moment it's only got two. So what you need to do is fill that up and make it eight. So we've got two in that shared area, put another six on, and then it's got its full outer shell of eight. And that is our complete electronic configuration for hydrochloric acid, HCl. And if you want to just double check it, have a look at your chlorine, and it's got seven electrons which come from the chlorine atom. You know that because it's in group seven, and one of them has come from the hydrogen. You know that's got one in the outer shell. Therefore, you've got eight in total. If we do the same with water, H2O, we know we've got one oxygen in the middle with two bonds coming out to two hydrogen atoms. So the first thing you do is you put your oxygen in the center and then two hydrogens around the outside, like I'm doing here. So put your hydrogens and your oxygens in, which as you can see, the oxygen is coming from there and then the two hydrogens are from here. The next thing is to put your single bond in. So every line represents a single bond, which is one pair of shared electrons, so dot and across. And then that's the covalent bonding part complete. Hydrogen now has two electrons and it's full, and so does the other one. However, the oxygen has only got four. So again, we need to do the same thing. It needs to have eight. So put in four more. Now you know that you've got eight electrons in the outer shell and that is complete. And you know that six of them have come from the oxygen because it's in group six and two from the hydrogen to give it eight in total. Let's go back to methane now. So methane is CH4. We've got one carbon in the middle with four hydrogens around the outside. So do exactly the same again. Put your carbon into the center and then surround it with your four hydrogens. Next, for every one of those lines, put in your dot and cross. So we should have one for every hydrogen and carbon bond. And then do the same again. Count up and make sure. Two electrons for that hydrogen, two for that two for that and two for that so all the hydrogens are full and the carbon you've got eight which has got a full outer shell so you don't need to do any more to that one the same pattern continues when you have oxygen so as you should be able to remember that oxygen has that double bond in so this time just draw your two oxygens overlapping and then put in that two pairs of shared electrons so then it's a case of counting up how many electrons you've got on both oxygen atoms which is four. However, you should know by now that you need eight in total. Then you need to work out how many electrons each oxygen atom has shared. So each one, because it's a double bond, has shared two electrons. So there are two electrons from this oxygen atom here. How many should there be from that oxygen atom in total? Look on the periodic table, which has got six. So you know that you've got two of those six already in there. Add four more on. That gives me my six that I had in the first place plus my two from the other oxygen atom, and I have a full outer shell. Repeat this on the other side, and both your oxygen atoms have a full outer shell of eight electrons. The final example you need to be able to remember for the exam is carbon dioxide, CO2. Now, we drew that earlier, which has got oxygen double bonded to a carbon, double bonded to another oxygen. So put your carbon atom in the center, two oxygens around the outside, and for every double bond, put in that two pairs of shared electrons. Then count up. So your carbon now has eight electrons and it's full. Oxygen only has four. How many does it need? Eight. So add four more on. And then the same on the other side. And that will give you eight for both oxygens and eight for your carbon. So that will have a full outer shell and you have your dot and cross diagram fully drawn. Okay, let's see if we can put that to the test then. So question one says draw the dot and cross diagram for the covalent bonding in hydrogen fluoride. And then part two says draw the dot and cross diagram for the bonding in ammonia NH3. So think back to what we've just done. Think back to working out the number of electrons in the outer shell, the number of bonds they need to form, do the overlapping, put in the single bonds, the dot and crosses, and have a go at both of them. Pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done in a minute. 
Okay, let's have a look then. So if we start off with hydrogen fluoride. So your first task is to put down the two elements. So hydrogen is in group one and fluorine is in group seven. So how many bonds do they want to make? Hydrogen, one bond, and fluorine, one bond. So if both of them only want to make one bond, you just have one of each of them together like this. You know you've got that one bond then, so it's a single bond. So draw your overlap and then put in your single bond. That gets you your first mark. You then need to find out whether they've got full outer shells. Hydrogen does, it's got two, but fluorine, which also has two, doesn't. So you need to add six more on to give it its eight. So seven in the outer shell, one from hydrogen gives you eight in total and you fall out of shell. So you get one mark for having the covalent bonding in the center and one mark for the rest of it being complete. If we move on to the second one, ammonia then. So ammonia is NH3. You've got one nitrogen and three hydrogen. So in this case, you just draw the nitrogen in the middle and then the three hydrogen attached to it overlapping. You know hydrogen can form one bond, so you put in your single bonds like that. Count up how many you've got in total, which is six. You need two more to give you eight. One mark for the single bond and then one mark for the rest of it being correct. Okay. That about sums up this video, a nice long one. What I'd like you to do now is have a go at the review question, which will test your memory based on what we've just done. So for all the ones that we've gone through today, I'd like you to draw the dot and cross diagrams. So that's oxygen, carbon dioxide, methane, hydrogen, and hydrochloric acid. That ends this video.